We're joined by Hans Gerdy, Head of Investment Asia at Bank International Luxembourg, joining us around the desk at the SGX. Thank you for getting up this early hour, sir, to join us. Well, you're going up early than me. <laughs> uh, so, Hans, look, you know, we've got to talk about the trends in the Asian markets here because, I mean, I've noticed a fairly interesting development, not just myself, but probably a lot of you out there in the investment community. The pendulum switch, uh, switching in favor of China. I'm not sure at a, at a cost of which particular market, but what has been the trigger for that trend? Well, evaluations have been low in China for quite some time. And of course, we always said it's for a reason. Uh, I think in China, you do have a commitment to reform. And I think the, the purge, the, you know, the anti-corruption mm -hmm. purge shows that uh, President Xi has a lot of power. And I think it gives him probably the clout to actually push through reforms with very little uh, resistance because he's now targeting the real uh, you know, top echelon. And we think mm -hmm. we're getting probably close to that purge and maybe we move more into uh, uh, economic reforms. So in terms of this reform process in China, I mean, it, it, it was announced a long time ago, but people were criticizing, saying that it all comes down to execution. What you're saying here is that they are executing, they're delivering. Well, I think they're trying to deliver. First of all, the economy has picked up again. Uh, they've targeted, with some targeted measures, they, you know, they brought growth back to about 7.5% again. So that's, that's certainly a positive. You add in the valuations plus the commitment to reform. I think that's a mix where you could say, yes, there's an upside here from a very low base. Mm. So you're, you're optimistic about China. It, it's one of your top picks. But are there any sort of bumps in the road? Do you have uh, any major concerns in terms of the reforms or in terms of certain sectors? Uh, well, there are always bumps in the road, obviously. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of risk. I mean, China has been, the whole boom in China has been built on credit. As we all know, of course, there's, there's huge problems in the banking uh, system. That's one of the concerns, although we think that uh, the, post, the uh, NPL or non-performing loans, uh, banks have offloaded a lot of toxic assets into the shadow banking sector so we don't think there's going to be a hard landing or anything mm -hmm. but if, if there's a problem it could be from, uh, from that side. In the meantime uh, looking at the biggest market in Asia up in Japan I mean we sort of uh, were in a bit of a lull period for a while with the dolly yen stuck in those tight ranges of 101 we're sort of breaking up one or two you know the Arbonomics the third arrow is of course a very medium long term uh, you know, um, um, a sort of policy achievement for the Japanese uh, uh, politicians. With that in mind, uh, is it going to be a major game player for this year? Well, Japan, we have been bullish on Japan for quite some time, and uh, still on valuation, on a valuation basis, Japan is one of the most attractive uh, markets in the world. It sells at, uh, on a price to book value basis, it sells at a 20% discount to Asia, 30% to Europe, and 50% to the United States. Mm. You have more shareholder value, which means return on equity will go up. You have pension reform, which will, uh, you know, re result in asset allocation towards riskier assets like equities. And you have a Bank of Japan, which is extremely supportive. Uh, they have an inflation target of 2%. If there's any risk that the inflation target will not be reached, uh, they will not hesitate to do more in terms of QQE. And, and the weaker yen, of course, has been helping the exporters and, and the big corporates. But on the flip side, it's hurting in terms of the cost of electricity and the cost of doing business and, and consumers as well. I mean, how much weaker can it go? How, how sustainable can it be? Well, actually, I thought it would be weaker by now. I'm surprised it actually is at 101, 102. Uh, we think it will weaken if the Bank of Japan expands QQE, and of course, that would add to inflation. Uh, you could say it's bad inflation because imported energy costs will go up, but at the same time, uh, at some point, some of the nuclear power plants in Japan might be switched on again, although it's a highly unpopular decision. Uh, but there are moves in that direction that uh, I think two of, uh, of those will be switched on again. and. Uh, obviously, that, that should give some relief on that well, score. The situation would be completely different if they could, if they had the political will, or they actually could bring on all those nuclear reactors, right, and shift the energy so. policy in a dramatic fashion, because that would cut it's, the cost it's, of it. It's a bit of uh, wishful thinking. Wishful but, uh, thinking. Yeah, that's right. But yeah. uh, fair and the cost of energy reason. contributed to that huge trade deficit that exactly. we saw Absolutely. in June. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Hans. Great to see you, Hans Goethe, see you, Hans. from the Bank uh, Internationale of Luxembourg here in Asia.